Happy Black History Month, everyone. I know it's been kind of a wild ride with blackface scandals, racist fashion designs, and plain old discrimination. But the problem I'm going to talk about today is not exclusive to February. It's a 24-7, 365 kind of problem. And that's the lack of representation of black journalists in newsrooms. Let's get one thing clear. There are plenty of us in America. I mean, there's a national association filled with black journalists, as well as plenty of people outside of the organization. But when it comes to various publications across the country, there's a huge disconnect. According to the American Society of News Editors, black reporters made up just under 5% of newsrooms in 2015. That's unacceptable. There should be a proportionate range of all identities, different political ideologies, sexualities, abilities, and yes, races. So when companies like CBS release their political reporting teams for the 2020 presidential election, it's really obvious when there are no African American journalists in sight. Black people are an integral part of this country, and to have no representation before a major election means that you lose insight into what a large chunk of the population is thinking. Now, a lack of black journalists is no new phenomenon. So for this Black History Month, we're going to dive into a little black history. Black-led newspapers popped up in major cities throughout the 1800s, filling a crucial gap in news coverage. They were able to document important moments in black history, things that no white newspapers were even close to covering at the time. And when white papers did write about horrible moments like lynchings, the stories focused on the sensational nature of the murder, or the white perspective, rather than the actual news. In the late 1800s and early 1900s, famous journalists like Mary Ann Chad Carey and Frederick Douglass were instrumental in transforming how the nation viewed things like lynchings. They even persuaded hundreds of thousands of black people to move from the South to the North during the Great Migration. I could go on and on about journalists like Ida B. Wells or publications like the Chicago Defender, Ugh, their minds, but it was becoming really obvious. White publications still weren't getting it. And that really became a problem during the civil rights movement of the 1960s and 70s. In 1967, President Lyndon Johnson created a commission to explain why so many race riots were breaking out across the nation and to recommend further action, ideally in a way that absolved him or the government of any responsibility. Typical. But the 1968 Kerner Report claimed that America was actually, quote, moving toward two societies, one black, one white, separate, and unequal. In particular, one major problem they found was the lack of black journalists in newsrooms. Because the news media did not accurately portray violence and race relations, they were spreading a false image of black people to the rest of the country and not doing their job as journalists. Let's just say President Johnson was not too happy when he heard this report. Truth hurts, LBJ. So where are we now, 50 years after the Kerner Report? Well, the American Society of News Editors reported that people of color make up 22.6% of newsrooms today. But for a country that's over 40% not white, that's far from representative. Black journalists, just like any other race, are so important to have in the room and at the table. We hold particular sets of knowledge about this country's history and its history with black people that are so important to share. We can't pretend that journalists are blank slated robots anymore. We all know that everyone has a unique context and experience to share. Confronting our nation's relationship with race is essential to understanding the 2020 presidential election. 2016 was a huge example of how homogenous newsrooms can often mess up the really complex subject of race relations. To not have any black journalists in the room 50 years after the Kerner Commission released its report is shameful. Black journalists deserve better. America deserves better.